How do you envisage your later years? Are you picturing days filled with frailty, endless naps and bouts of forgetfulness? Or do you see yourself actively engaging in hobbies, flexing both your mind and body and radiating the energy of someone half your age? Peter Attia, the brilliant mind behind the book Outlive, doesn't just pose these questions, he provides the answers. According to him, the ticket to a vibrant later life isn't locked behind genetics or sheer luck. It's about the daily habits we cultivate. The kicker, the sooner you start, the better the payoff. So, if you're keen on dodging that physical and mental decline and truly living in every moment, stick around. We're about to unpack the six key insights from Outlive that will redefine aging for you. Insight 1. The Four Horsemen In the early 1900s, many people were cut short primarily due to eight major contagious diseases. Thankfully, advancements in medicines introduced antibiotics and vaccines, dramatically reducing these threats. But if we exclude these diseases from the equation, our overall longevity hasn't seen a significant improvement. Today, there are four diseases that predominantly affect our later years. These chronic diseases account for 80% of deaths in people over 50 who do not smoke. They are heart disease, cancer, neurological conditions like Alzheimer's and dementia, and type 2 diabetes. These aren't conditions that suddenly appear overnight, they're chronic, meaning they develop over many years or even decades. Dr. Atia refers to these as the four horsemen, drawing a parallel to the harbingers of the apocalypse. He emphasises that to combat these diseases effectively, we need a paradigm shift in medicine. Current practices, which he labels Medicine 2.0, tend to treat people primarily when they're already sick. Atia advocates for a transition to Medicine 3.0, a more preventative and proactive approach that focuses on a better metabolism and a fit and active lifestyle. Consider the analogy, imagine being the captain of the Titanic. Rather than solely relying on a lookout to spot icebergs, akin to the four horsemen diseases, it would be far more prudent to have advanced tools like radar or GPS. This foresight would allow us to detect potential threats from afar and navigate safely. Effectively, Atia is saying we need to be more personally responsible for our health and take a more long-term proactive approach to the prevention of the problem and the four horsemen diseases. Insight 2. Insulin resistance. Imagine your body is a bathtub. If you leave the faucet running and block the drain, Sooner or later, water is going to spill out everywhere, causing a mess. Similarly, when we eat more than our body needs, it's like that overflowing water. Instead of being neatly stored under our skin as subcutaneous fat, this excess energy starts cramming into dangerous spots, like around our organs. This is what we call visceral fat. And just like that water damaging the house, this fat increases our risks of nasty things like cancer and heart disease. Now picture your body's cells as balloons. As we keep feeding them energy, they start to fill up. Once they're full, they don't want any more. But our body, not getting the memo, pushes out more insulin, a hormone that acts like a pump, trying to force more energy into these already full balloons. Over time, if we keep overeating, our cells simply refuse to take in more energy. Our body then panics and produces even more insulin. This overload of insulin and energy is what leads to a condition called insulin resistance. Dr. Atia points out that insulin resistance is a big deal. It can increase our risk of cancer by 12 times, Alzheimer's by 5 times, and heart disease by 6 times. By tackling insulin resistance, we're not just preventing these diseases, we're also giving ourselves a shot at a longer, healthier life. Want to know where you stand? Regularly check your glucose and insulin levels. It's a simple blood test that can provide a wealth of information about your health. Insight 3. Exercise. Dr. Atia believes that if there's one magic pill for good health, it's exercise. Imagine this, just adding a 90 minute walk to your week can make you 14% less likely to face any serious health issues. Dr. Atia recommends splitting your fitness routine into three distinct areas. Number one, cardio. This is all about how efficiently your heart and lungs work. To improve, there's something called zone two cardio. Imagine a workout where you're not out of breath, but you can't exactly belt out your favorite song either. It's like taking a brisk walk where you can chat with a friend, but maybe not debate the finer points of philosophy. Doing this type of training, like walking fast for an hour, just twice a week can do wonders. And hey, why not listen to some fun podcasts or audiobooks while you're at it? Number two, intense workouts. 
Now this is where things heat up. VO2 max is all about maximizing the amount of oxygen your body uses during exercise. HIIT or high intensity interval training is one of the best ways to improve it. Picture this, sprinting full force for three minutes, then walking or jogging at a relaxed pace for another three minutes. Repeat this cycle five to seven times and that's it. It's like turning your workout into a game of speed up, slow down. This push and rest routine trains your body to recover quickly and use oxygen more efficiently. And the best part, you don't need to spend hours, just 20 to 30 minutes of HIIT once or twice a week can make a massive difference. Number three, strength. As we age, muscle and bone strength decrease. So strength workouts are crucial. One standout exercise is the farmer's carry. Picture this, holding a heavy weight like a dumbbell or a kettlebell in each hand and walking a set distance or time. It's like carrying two heavy grocery bags from your car to your house. This not only strengthens our grip, but also our arms, our shoulders and our core. Other grip enhancing exercise included dead hanging from a pull-up bar or using grip trainers. To ensure you're doing these exercises correctly, it might be wise to learn from a trainer or instructional videos. Mixing these workouts, focusing on heart health, strength and balance sets the stage for an active and robust life, no matter your age. Insight 4. Diet. Now that you have your exercise regime cut out for you, let's shift gears and take a look at all things diet. A big problem Americans face these days is what's known as the standard American diet or SAD. It's loaded with sugars, refined carbs and processed oils which can lead to overeating and poor health. To break free from this SAD trap you can try caloric restriction, dietary restriction or time restriction. Remember, each approach has its pros and cons, so choose what fits your lifestyle best. Caloric restriction is the most flexible option, but it requires tracking everything you eat and resisting the urge to cheat. Dietary restriction involves cutting specific foods, but only works if it leads to caloric deficit. Time restriction, like intermittent fasting, can backfire if you overeat or don't get enough protein. Let's flip this around for a minute and switch focus to what you should be eating. First up is protein. It's essential for building and maintaining muscle, especially as we age. Aim for at least one gram of protein per pound of body weight daily, or 2.2 grams per kilo. Spread your protein intake throughout the day and choose high quality sources like whey protein isolate over soy protein isolate. Eating enough protein can also help you feel full so you'll consume fewer calories overall. Remember, protein helps you to feel full and maintain muscle mass, especially as we age and animal sources of protein are more effective than plant sources, so keep that in mind. Next up are fats. Not all fats were created equal. We need a mix of saturated, monosaturated and polyunsaturated fats with a focus on omega-3s for heart and brain health. Offer extra virgin olive oil, avocados and nuts while cutting back on butter, lard and omega-6 rich oils like corn, soybean and sunflower. Time restricted eating or fasting can be beneficial, but it's not for everyone. There are some short term eating windows, alternate day fasting and longer term fasting. Intermittent fasting and time restricted eating are popular weight loss methods, but their effectiveness and potential downsides are debatable. Fasting triggers the psychological and cellular mechanisms like insulin level drops and cellular repair gene activation. Still, prolonged fasting can lead to muscle loss. Having said all that, fasting can work for weight loss, but it must be approached with caution and precision. It's probably best to consult your doctor before beginning a fasting regime. Lastly, let's talk about adopting what Atiyah calls Nutrition 3.0 Mindset. It's all about finding the right balance that works for you. Don't overthink it, focus on reducing overall energy intake, getting enough protein and finding the right mix of fats. Also remember that exercise and spending time outdoors are just as important for your health. Ultimately, there are no one size fits all approach, so it's up to you to find your own balance. Insight 5. Sleep. Armed with the essentials for exercise and nutrition, it's time to delve into the profound impact sleep has on our health and well-being. Atia's eyes were open to the significance of sleep for both physical and cognitive help after flirting with death, having gone without sleep for 60 hours he found himself dozing off the wheel and narrowly avoiding a serious car accident. This harrowing experience should serve as a powerful reminder for everyone to reevaluate their relationship with sleep and prioritize it as a vital component of a healthy lifestyle. 
Anecdotes aside, there are plenty of studies showing negative side effects of lack of sleep. Indeed, it's been linked to an increased risk of things like heart attacks, type 2 diabetes and even workplace accidents. It's not just about feeling tired, it's about your overall health. For example, one study showed that sleeping less than 7 hours a night can increase your risk of dying prematurely by 12%. The statistics don't lie. Sleep deprived drivers cause around 20% of all car accidents and sleep deprivation also leads to more workplace accidents and medical errors. But let's switch gears and get back to the positives. Studies have shown that we need about 7.5 to 8 hours of sleep every night. With good sleep, your physical and cognitive performance can improve, including things like athletic performance and memory consolidation. Also, sleep helps you to keep your metabolism in check and reduces the risk of chronic health problems such as metabolic dysfunction, type 2 diabetes and heart disease. Many people search for that magic pill to put them to sleep, but the reality is many sleep aids out there don't actually improve sleep quality. In fact, some can even harm your sleep, like Ambien or Valium. So what can you do to improve your sleep naturally? First, it's essential to evaluate your sleep habits. Use sleep trackers or take sleep questionnaires like the Pittsburgh Sleep Quality Index to figure out how you're doing. Don't forget, everybody's different. Some of us are morning people, while others are night owls. So try to work out your natural rhythm. Now onto some more concrete tips. It's definitely a good idea to cut down on blue light exposure before bed, maybe by swapping out LEDs for warmer ones. Keep your bedroom cool about 65 degrees Fahrenheit or 18 degrees Celsius and make sure your bedroom is as dark as possible. Try to avoid screens an hour before bedtime. That late night media scrolling isn't helping. Be mindful of what you consume too. Keep caffeine and alcohol in check as they mess with your sleep. And finally, don't forget to manage stress. Meditation can be a game changer for winding down. Even superstar athletes like LeBron James prioritise sleep for peak performance. He reportedly sleeps for 12 hours a day with a special mattress and pillows. So take a page out of LeBron's playbook and create a sleep routine that works for you. Stick to it and you'll be on your way to a better sleep and improved overall well-being. Insight 6. Emotional health. You've reached the final component of longevity, emotional health. When you think about being healthy, you probably focus on the physical well-being, but your emotional health is just as important, if not more so. After all, what good is living a good long life if you're not happy or fulfilled? For example, someone struggling with depression might not see the point of getting a cancer screening or monitoring their blood sugar levels. On the other hand, someone who's physically fit might not realise how emotional issues can impact their overall health. So, if you're dealing with emotional or mental struggles, don't hesitate to seek professional help. It's crucial to address these issues to maintain good physical health. Dealing with emotional health can be tricky. Unlike physical health, it's hard to recognise and diagnose. That's why you need a proactive and individualised approach. Look out for signs of emotional health issues. Seek help early and commit to daily practices that promote long-term emotional well-being. There are a number of tools to monitor and maintain emotional equilibrium. Medications, meditation and psychedelics can help, but they're not quick fixes. They should be seen as part of real physiotherapy like dialectic behavioral therapy or DBT. This is a proven method that helps to regulate emotions and tolerate emotional stressors. DBT is built on four pillars, emotional regulation, de-stress tolerance, interpersonal effectiveness and self-management, all linked to mindfulness. It's important to remember though that change takes time and effort. Practicing daily and working through issues in therapy is key to achieving through recovery. Another thing to consider is self-reflection. Many people struggle with self-hatred and the need for external validation. It's essential to work on your relationship with yourself and recognize how your past experiences shape your present behavior. Take childhood trauma, for instance. It can show up in various forms like addiction, codependency and attachment disorders. It's important to address these issues, but this can be a real challenge. So what can you do? Look out for signs of emotional health issues. Seek help early and commit to daily reflection and meditation. And remember, healing takes time, so be patient with yourself during the process. Lastly, let's go back to longevity. To stay young and healthy, focus on looking forward to the future and pursuing your dreams and aspirations. Find activities that bring you joy and fulfillment, like spending time in nature, practicing mindfulness or journaling. Remember, emotional health is just as important as physical health. Take care of yourself and don't be afraid to seek help if needed. 
With time, patience and the right tools, you can make progress toward a happier and healthier life. I hope you found the summary of Peter Aftivia's Outlive useful. Have a fantastic day.